Hey folks, I have a really important message for you today. I'm so excited about what God is doing in and through Ridgepoint Church in 2021 and beyond. You know, each church and each body of believers are set up just a little bit different, but it takes us all to grow the kingdom of God. Today, I'm going to share with you why we exist here at Ridgepoint Church. This is what God has called us to do specifically to grow the kingdom of God. This is how we grow, and this is how we grow together, and this is how we affect change for the kingdom of God. This is why we exist. This is us. Our leadership uh, here at Ridgepoint Church, we've been gathering for a really long time, uh, just kind of praying through what God would have in store for us moving forward. We know that things have changed, our society has changed, our nation has changed, our community has changed. And therefore, we were just asking God, hey, what are you doing, Lord? What are you doing? Because whatever you're doing, we want to be a part of that. We want to be a part of whatever you're doing. And so that is going to begin this series that we start today. Eight years ago, a small group of people came together, driven by a passion to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And these people had an idea. They, had, they really had no idea on how to do it or what to do, but they knew that something had to be done. What was driving them so strongly was the knowledge that 90% of the people that live in Floyd County, Kentucky, do not attend church. 90% of the people in Floyd County do not attend church. Church, there's around 35,000 people in Floyd County. Do you know that there's nearly 100 churches in Floyd County? Did anybody know that? There's nearly 100 churches in Floyd County with 35,000 residents. There's literally 14 churches from US 23 to Jenny Wiley on this little stretch of road right outside of our church. It's crazy, isn't it? It's almost unbelievable. But do you know that that's around 31,500 people in Floyd County that don't attend church today? That's around 31,500 people that likely do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. How could that be? What are we missing? What are, what are we missing? There's so many churches to choose to worship at, yet so few people do. This problem, this problem became the driving force for this group of people nearly eight years ago. They knew that they had to be different than the other hundred churches, but not just for the sake of being different, not just for the sake of being different, not, not simply for the sake of, of being different, but for the sake of connecting and engaging the 90% of the people in Floyd County that do not attend church or haven't found a home church at this point. What were they going to do? What was this group of people nearly eight years ago? What were they going to do and how were they going to act so that more people would find freedom in a relationship with Jesus Christ? And so with those questions in mind and their passion to reach their co-workers, their aunts, their uncles, the cashier at Walmart, the server at Billy Ray's. Rich Point Church was born of a desire to reach the unchurched, the de-churched, the disenfranchised, the outcast, those that have been hurt by the church, and anyone else that wanted to join the journey to extend the kingdom of God in Floyd County. This is us. Father, we thank you today so much. We thank you so much for this mission that you have called us to. To reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news of Jesus Christ. May we today and forever be in line with what you have called us to do. And we ask it in Jesus Christ's name and everyone says, Amen. Folks, we want to see people set free. Amen. We want to see people who are broken find wholeness in a relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to see that those that are addicted find life 
in Christ. We, we want to see marriages restored and, and families put back together and singles that have given their lives to the work of Jesus Christ to build His kingdom on earth. We believe that this kind of transformation comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ and real relationships with each other within a community of believers. We have the ability to be transformed. Therefore, therefore, at Ridge Point Church, we exist so that more people experience transforming relationships through Jesus Christ. This is us. Isn't it great? Isn't it great to know that, that while we exist, we exist so that more people can experience those transforming relationships through Jesus Christ. We're going to break, break that down today. This is kind of going to kind of be the foundation for who we are while we exist and how we move forward into 2021 and beyond. And so we're going to break the statement down. The first part of that statement says we exist so that more people. We exist so that more people. People, guys, this is straight up the great commission that Jesus gave to us. This is straight up the great commission that Jesus gave to us before he ascended back into heaven after his work here on earth was complete. He had some departing words for us. And, and just think about this. This was the last thing that he said to us as he was ascending into heaven. It's pretty important, right? The last thing that Jesus says before he ascends into heaven, probably we should listen to, right? We should kind of listen to this. And this is what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 28, he says this. Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teach these new disciples to obey all the commands that I've given you. And be sure of this. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Guys, Jesus gave us a command before He ascended into heaven. He gave us this command to make more disciples. He gave us this command to make more disciples. We're supposed to listen to what Jesus said, right? Right? We're supposed to listen to it. But aren't we also supposed to do what Jesus said to do? We listen to what He said, and we do what He said to do, and then we teach others to do the same thing. We teach others to do the same thing. We're called to make disciples of Jesus who make disciples of Jesus. And then those disciples make more disciples of Jesus and so on and so forth. That's how we affect change. And that's how we build the kingdom of God. That's how we make a dent in the 90%. Disciples making disciples who make disciples, right? That's the way it works. We replicate ourselves. As we learn from Jesus, we teach others to learn from Jesus. So we exist so that more people, we exist so that more people, more people become disciples and more people invest in others and create more disciples. So, right? That's the first part of that sentence. We exist so that more people. The next part is this. We exist so that more people experience transforming or, for these purposes, transformation. We exist so that more people experience transformation. What does it mean to experience transformation? What really does transformation mean? Listen, listen. We can all relate to this one. We can all relate to this one because we all need to be transformed from something to something greater. Amen? We all need to be transformed from something to something greater. Transformation is just its another word for freedom as well. It's another word for freedom. We're all about freedom and realness here at Ridge Point Church. That means that we don't want to hide behind our masks, guys. We want to be real with each other. I said this the other day. God can't bless or God won't bless who we pretend to be. 
God won't bless who we pretend to be. We have to take our masks off. We have to get real with each other. When we're real with each other and we take our masks off, then God can transform us. He can free us. We can't hide behind our mask and act like we have it all together, act like we're perfect and, and that we don't struggle with issues in our lives. I'll be the first one to tell you as a pastor of Rich Point Church, I don't have it all together. I don't. I struggle every single day of life just like you do. I don't have it all together. We need freedom and transformation from our addictions. We need freedom from uh, the struggle with drugs and alcohol and pills. And, and we need to be transformed from, from, from overeating, right? We need some of us, we just, that's me. I'm talking to myself. I was talking to Taylor the other day. I've gained like 70 pounds since we got married. She's like, I didn't marry this guy. No, you're right. I'm sorry. Listen, many of us struggle with issues that are socially acceptable. And even some of us struggle with issues that we even accept inside the church. You know that there are certain sins that we as church, that, that not just us at Ridgepoint, but the Big C Church, we just accept. That's just kind of the way it is. So many of us struggle with some of those things as well. For some of us, we need to be transformed from our judgmental attitudes. I don't hear a lot of amens on that one. Some of us need to be transformed uh, from the sin of gossiping. I don't hear a lot of amens, but I feel it this morning. I feel it. Some of us need to be transformed from the sin of gossiping. Some of us need to be transformed from the sin of lust and pornography addiction. These things are tearing our families apart. Some of us need to be transformed from those. Some of us need to be freed from the desire to be liked and accepted by everyone. We just need to be freed from that. We need to be freed from that. Many of us need to be transformed from our pride and our envy. None of us have it all together, guys. None of us have it all together. We are all in desperate need of transformation. All of us. Paul says that we need to be transformed from our sinful nature. And I've read these verses. I'm getting ready to read to you right now. All my life since I've been a Christian, I've read these verses. But for some reason right now, they're coming to life. He says this, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit, the Holy Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. He goes on to say, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, Paul would say, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Folks, these are some of the things that Paul outlines that we need to be freed and transformed from. These are things that lead to death. But Jesus came to give us life and give us life more abundantly. Amen? He came to, to, to free us from these and transform us from the, the, the sinful nature or the sinful uh, desires inside of us. There's no life in these things. There's no hope in these things. There's no peace in these things. God isn't in these things. So we need to be transformed from these things. But what do we need to be transformed to? What is God transforming us to? Paul goes on to say, glory to God. In verse 22, he says, but the Holy Spirit, sinful nature produces those other things, but the Holy Spirit produces the kind of fruit in our lives. He says, love and joy, peace, and patience, kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness, self-control. Like these are the things that we should be striving for, right? These are the attributes or the characteristics that, that we want and we need more of in our lives. How many need more patience? Raise your hand, it's okay. Type amen in the comments online. How many, how many need more self-control? 
I should not have ate that bowl of cereal last night at 10 o'clock. I just should have done it. Amen, right? We need the goodness. How many need kindness today? Or how many want to seek kindness from other people today? And we are divided like we've never been divided before. In my lifetime at least. Kindness. Love and joy and peace. You know what? God loves us so much that He doesn't leave us in our pride. God loves us so much that He doesn't leave us in our addictions. Amen, brother? God loves us so much that He doesn't leave us in our lustful pleasures or our gossiping or our judgmental attitudes. He transforms us into His image. Glory to God. He transforms us from something that we are to something so much better. Transforms us. He helps us to throw off the junk that only hurts us. And He clothes us with love and joy and peace, patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. He transforms us from death to life. Folks, we're all in need of transformation today. I don't care how long you've been a Christian how long you've been on this journey, how many churches you've attended in the past, how much money that you've given. We can't hide behind this stuff. We are all in need of transformation. And just because you're in church today, or just because you're watching online, man, we're all in the same boat. 90%, 31,500 people just in Floyd County alone. I don't want to talk about right now all the surrounding counties. But just in Floyd County alone, 31,500 people don't attend church. And it's likely don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We're all in the same boat. We all need to be transformed from something to something so much more. When we experience true transformation in our lives, when we experience true transformation in our lives, we're going to become like a lighthouse, like a lighthouse, a beacon of light to the rest of the world it says hey I used to be this way but glory be to God he changed me and transformed my life and guess what 90 percent of Floyd County he can transform yours as well he can bring you from death to life he can bring you from depression and depravity to hope and joy and peace and love and self-control God's all about transformation, and so are we here at Ridgepoint Church. And guys, that that all sounds good, right? It all sounds good. We know that we need transformation, but man, it's so difficult, isn't it? It's so difficult to become transformed and allow God to transform us. And it's even more difficult to maintain that transformation. It's difficult. It really is. We exist, third point, we exist so that more people experience transformation transforming, say it with me, relationships. We exist so that more people experience transforming relationships. Guys, we believe that the key to experience transformation, experiencing transformation and maintaining the transformed life is found in relationships. It's what we believe. The writer of Ecclesiastes says it like this. Two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone, they're in real trouble. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three, they're even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Guys, we are better when we're together. Amen? We are better when we're together. None of us were meant to travel this journey alone. None of us were meant to travel alone. If 2020 taught us anything, it's that we need each other desperately. We need each other desperately. We can hold each other up when life gets difficult. And we can hold each other accountable when we make poor decisions. Two people are better off than one, Ecclesiastes says. I truly, truly didn't understand this concept. As I was growing up, even in ministry, I really didn't understand this. I actually thought I was doing pretty good on my own. Everything was going fine. Until I met Taylor, my wife. She completes me in every way. She's my greatest help, my greatest encouragement. 
She loves me in spite of me 90% of the time. And don't get me wrong, she, she definitely calls me out when she thinks I'm, I'm crazy or I've made a poor decision. She definitely holds me accountable. Before Taylor, I thought everything was fine. I, I'm doing pretty good on my own. I was 30 years old before I met Taylor. And I thought everything was fine. I was doing pretty good. But looking back now, I really, really don't know how I made it without her. And so many times in my life, I needed someone to hold me accountable. To say, Clayton, that's a poor decision. You probably don't need to be doing that. Or to give me encouragement when life throws rocks at me. Because of my wife, I truly understand the concept of two people being better than one. But guys, it's so much bigger than marital relationships. It's so much bigger than marital relationships. It's about friendship. It's about companionship. It's about holding each other up when one of you are weak. To all my single folks here today, it's so important to surround yourself with healthy relationships. Friends that will encourage you when you need to be lifted up. And friends that can call you out when you're out of line. Healthy, encouraging relationships have a way of transforming us into something far greater than we could ever be on our own. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop with just those healthy, earthly relationships. Relationships with each other are so important. And those are what we would call horizontal relationships. Those are the people out to our left and our right that we bring in to our families but the most important relationship of all is that vertical relationship between you and God. Amen? Like, that's the relationship that's so much more important, your relationship with Jesus. You see, it all starts with the relationship with Jesus. Relationships with each other are super important, and we need them desperately. But it all starts with the relationship with God. That's the most important. We can have a relationship with the Father because of the work of the Son. On the cross. Jesus gave up his life for us. He paid the penalty for our sins so that you and I could be reunited and in relationship with God the Father. And today, we can have that relationship with God because of the work of Jesus Christ. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can have that relationship with God the Father. Check this out. I love these scriptures. John chapter 14, Jesus says this. If you love me, if you lo just picture Jesus saying these words to you today. If you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate. This is before Jesus ascended into heaven. And this advocate, He will never leave you. That also means He'll be in relationship with you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The, word can, the world cannot receive Him because it isn't looking for Him and it doesn't recognize Him. But you know Him because He lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. Guys, that's some encouraging words from Jesus himself. There are incredible promises in these words from Jesus. What a beautiful relationship that Jesus has outlined. He says, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm, I'm actually sending you help. I'll be with you, even in you. And I'll be closer than anyone else in your life. You won't be left alone like an orphan because I live, you also will live. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for that amazing and wonderful relationship. Guys, we exist so that more people experience transforming relationships through Jesus Christ. We exist because we believe people can change. We exist because we believe people can be transformed into who God created them to be. We exist because we want to bring hope the hope that's found in Jesus Christ to our aunts and to our uncles and to our cousins and our co-workers and the cashier at Walmart and, and the server at Billy Ray's to the delivery drivers all throughout Floyd County that don't know Jesus Christ. We exist to bring freedom from the things that are destroying so many families 
and lives around us. We exist to bring glory to the name of Jesus. This is us. Listen, I want to end with a story. When Apple, the, the, the conglomerate Apple that every one of us probably, most people in this room or people online are watching on an Apple device. I left mine in the front pew. When Apple wants to hire someone to come and work for their company, they seek out the best and the brightest. They seek out the most brightest person in the field in which they want to hire. And what do you think they say to these people when they seek them out? They don't go to them and offer them the biggest salaries in the world. They don't offer them the biggest benefits package in the world. They don't even offer them the nicest work environment than any other company. Although all those things are accurate if you work for Apple. They don't offer them those things. When Apple hires someone for a job, they say this. The world is rapidly changing. And Apple is an integral part of that change. Come work for us and let's change the world. Come work for us and let's change the world. That's how Apple hires people. They aren't interested in in, in people whose only focus is on money or work environments or benefits packages. They want the very best to come and help them change the world. And folks, I will make the argument today that our world is rapidly changing. Our community is rapidly changing. Folks are divided now more than ever. Folks are in need of Jesus more than politics now more than ever. Folks are in need of the hope that only comes from a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Folks are in need of healthy relationships where we encourage each other when we're down and we need help. Folks are in in need of healthy relationships when people call them out, when they're acting like a fool. Folks, our world needs changing. And it starts right here at Rich Point Church today. Will you help us change the world? Will you help us change the world? This group of of people, I'm going to ask the worship folks to come. This group of people came together eight years ago and they planted Rich Point Church. We're here today because of the work of this group of people over eight years ago. Led by God, To bring freedom and life. Beginning with the 31,500 people in Floyd County that don't currently go to church. And expanding out to to the region, to the state, to the nation, and to the world. Guys, we believe. We believe that this change will happen. That this transformation And this change that we so desperately need will happen when we help more people experience transforming relationships through Jesus Christ. So here's my challenge. Here's my challenge for you this week. I have two of them actually. My first challenge is I want you to be certain about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Like it's pretty simple. If you're watching online today, Are you here with us? I want you to be certain about your relationship with Jesus Christ. I can't imagine starting a new year not knowing. Today, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, saved and secured by the blood of Jesus. And so my first challenge to you is to be certain about your relationship with God. Who is God, you may be asking? Maybe you're watching online and and this is the first time that you've ever been in a church setting, service, And you ask the question, who is God? Well, let me tell you this. God is the living word. God is the living word. He's the one who became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the sinless son of God who loved us so much and reached out to people who are hurting, people who are broken. Their lives were torn apart. He loved them. He loved them as they were, but never left them there. Praise be to God. He transforms us. 
Jesus became sin for us on the cross of Calvary. He died in our place. And on the third day when the stone was rolled away, He was not there. Why? Because by the power of God, He defeated death, hell, and the grave. So that anyone, and that includes you, everyone in this room, or anyone that's watching online right now, that includes you. So that anyone, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord, your sins will be forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Right now, the only thing that's separating you from Him is your sin. When you confess your need for Him, He forgives you of your sins. He brings you life and life to the fullest. He gives you grace and mercy and salvation. You can accept the free gift of Jesus Christ as we pray in just a few moments. If you're watching online today, especially on Facebook, I want you to text the word. Text the word STEP, S-T-E-P, to the phone number 606-268-4886. Step to 268-4886 and someone will reach out to you and pray with you today as you give your heart and give your life to following Jesus Christ. Second, for everyone else, here's what I'm going to challenge the church with today. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to challenge you guys with this. I want you to share why we exist. We exist so that more people experience transforming relationships through Jesus Christ. I want you to, to share that statement. If you call Ridge Point Church your home, this is where God has planted you. This is where God has called you. I want you to share that statement with three people this week. We're all about relationships. In your relationships this week, find a way to share with three people why we exist so that more people experience transforming relationships through Jesus Christ. Talk about the mission that God has called us to. This is us, folks. This is us. This is why we exist. This is why we're here gathering today in this room and online. This is us. The altar is open. Anyone wants to come and pray. Maybe today you're in this room and you want to make sure that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The altar is open. Let's pray. Father, Father, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you so much for this opportunity. God, I thank you for this time together that you have given us. Father, if there's anyone in this room today or anyone online that doesn't know you as their Savior, I pray that today, I pray that today is the day that they give their lives to you. As a matter of fact, everyone keep your heads bowed. If you're listening today and today you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Father in heaven, I thank you for my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to transform me from death to life. Today, I make you Lord of my life. I affirm today that Jesus Christ is the Savior, the only Son of God who put on a flesh, came to earth, took on my sins, died on the cross, was buried, and arose on the third day. And today, Jesus sits in heaven, listening to me, making intercession with the Father. Today, I commit my life to you, God. And I ask you to save me and make me new. Thank you, God. I love you. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen.
Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me today, I want to talk to you. If you're in this room, come up. As we start singing in a moment, come up. I want to pray with you. I want to talk with you. I want to celebrate with you what God has done. If you've been online and you prayed that prayer with me, what I want you to do is I want you to text the word STEP to 606-268-4886. Let me know or let us at Ridgepoint know about the, the step that you took today. The last thing I want to say to you guys real quick, I'm going to ask you to stand if you're in the room here at Ridgepoint Church today. Would you please stand? Guys, if you call Rich Point Church your home, if you call Rich Point Church your home, and today you're at home here at Rich Point Church, or if you're online watching today and you call Rich Point Church your home, and you're ready to move forward with us, we know why we exist. And I'm telling you, this is going to change how we do things moving forward. For the next three weeks, we're going to talk about what God is going to be doing in 2021 and, and how we're supposed to act in order to succeed as a church. Guys, get ready. We're on fire and we're excited about what God's doing. But if you call Rich Point Church your home, you're ready to move forward on mission together, then I want you to post this statement today at some point on social media. Just post this why we exist statement on social media. We exist so that more people experience transforming relationships through Jesus Christ. And I want you to hashtag RPC why we exist. Maybe you want to put a photo on there and let folks know uh, what you're doing to create change in Floyd County and in your own family. Why we exist. This statement will stay up after service. It'll be on our, our Facebook page as well. Just hashtag RPC why we exist. And write the sentence, we exist so that more people experience transforming relationships through Jesus Christ. Guys, I love you so much and I'm so thankful for you. The altar's open as we sing and as we worship the Lord.